Star Control is an old game in which players take part in a war for control of the stars. Star Control is also the subject of a legal case in which two parties are taking part in a war of words for control of the star. Control. Look, the game's called Star Control and people are fighting over who gets to control it. It's called Star Star Control first came out in July of 1990 on Amiga and MS-DOS. It was a pretty basic combat game in which ships fire projectiles at each other in one-on-one -on -one combat, as well as a strategic mode based around a 3D cluster of stars. The game is still on sale on Steam, but why is this 27-year-old space game in the news today, I hear you ask? Well, there's actually a weird public dispute taking place about this game, and who has the rights to sell it? It all started with a blog post on December the 1st from Paul Reich and Fred Ford, the actual creators of Star Control. In that post, they said there's a growing legal conflict between them and publisher Stardock. Stardock is currently developing a Star Control game of its own after it bought the rights to Star Control in 2013. Stardock's game is called Star Control Origins, while Ford and Reich are making Ghosts of the Precursors, which is pitched as a direct sequel to Star Control 2. Both are still in development, neither have anything to do with each other. Now, the conflict here seems to involve the sale of the classic classic Star Control games, Star Control 1, 2 and 3. Ford and Roche say Stardock is not allowed to sell the games without their permission. Quote, that permission has not been given. Stardock bought the rights in 2013 during a bankruptcy auction for Atari. Ford and Riker say this could not have happened. Quote, it's our opinion that Atari's right to publish our earlier games terminated over a decade before the auction. And we contend that Stardock has zero rights to our games, including any code and other IP we created. Stardock now seems to think that not only can they use our aliens, ships and narrative without our permission, but thinks that we cannot make a sequel to the Urquan Masters without their permission. This is where we got really really angry. They wrapped up the post saying, quote, we've been waiting 25 years to make Ghosts of the Precursors for our fans, and we certainly won't let this stop us. Go, go, go. They've kind of just made this blog post, and that's where it's all kind of emerged. They've just explained that there's been all this going on in the background, and that these two games are in development in tandem, but they've nothing to do with each other. One is published, or one is being developed and published by Stardock, I guess, or maybe they've got another developer. I don't know. Maybe I should have researched it. And then the original creators of Star Control are making another. Star, uh, Stardock have only got the rights to the game because they bought it in an auction when Atari went bust in 2013 and there's this whole mess now over who actually has the rights to sell sell the original games. It's, it is a weird situation. Stardock's Brad Wardell responded to this blog post in a forum post, saying the classic Star Control games have been on sale for a long time. Stardock held the rights that entire time, and Ford and Reichi have been getting paid for those sales. Quote, we are disappointed that Paul and Fred, two people we have a great deal of respect and admiration for, have chosen to imply that we are somehow preventing them from working on their new game. Stardock has been nothing but supportive of their new project and wish them the best. If they had an objection to the games being sold, this is something that could and should have been addressed before we were ever involved. Wardle acknowledged that Star Control IP is, quote, messy and insisted they have not used the aliens from the classic series. He said Stardock wants the original creators to make ghosts, but don't want any liability or association with it. And he got a bit dramatic with this as well. Quote, given the disturbing and unanticipated post by Paul and Fred, we are persuaded more than ever that a clear and irrefutable document that makes it clear that we are not associated or involved with a new game is needed. The fact that he calls them Paul and Fred, they're obviously quite friendly, they are friendly aren't they? Yeah, you can tell. That, and this yeah. is like a public spat that's going on through blog posts and forum posts and things like that. It's like airing your like dirty laundry in public essentially, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. it it's kind of funny to watch as an observer, but it, it can't be it can't be great for them arguing over who has rights to their IP and and I mean, obviously, you know, the creators, they feel like they're entitled to yeah. be in charge of what they created, although Atari kind of owned it, but didn't own it because they sold them the rights, but own it. It's very messy. Yeah, it's like an actual like rap battle or something as well, because they're not actually replying. They're just making their own <laughs> posts on their own stuff, and they know that the other person will see it. <laughs> well, yeah, he should be saying this yeah. and that, but he's really that talking directly to them. You know the names? Paul and Fred. Just, talk to the faces. Just phone each other, innit? You obviously have each other's phone numbers. Just talk. <laughs> Walk it out. Then on December the 4th, Ford and Reek announced they'd pull Star Control 1, 2, and 3 off GOG in another blog post. Stardock is still selling the games on Steam, but Ford and Wretch had their own agreement with GOG since 2011. Quote, we 
think it's necessary to clear the decks to help resolve our definitely not harmonious until recently private months long conflict with Brad Wardell and his lawyers at Stardock. In the last jab of the current round in this spat, Stardock's Brad Wardell made another forum post in which he said, quote, Stardock had a perpetual exclusive worldwide licensing and sales agreement from Atari, who in turn got it from publisher Accolade. That apparently has Paul Reicher's signature along with a signed distribution agreement between Atari and GOG for the DOS Accolade Star Control games. And in a last little snipe from Wardell, he said, quote, the tone of their blog post is similar to the kind of correspondence they had with us since the announcement of their Urquan Master's successor. Vague, full of demands, and without any documentation. With all due respect to Paul and Fred, they really should talk to competent legal counsel instead of making blog posts. Uh, yeah, this is ridiculous. I, I just, it's quite amazing that the, there's three grown-ups having <laughs> a very public uh, spat like this and just trying to one-up each other, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Just have a chat, guys. Sort it out. Yeah. There's got to be an amicable agreement to this. This is star control we're talking about as well. I don't mean to uh, belittle your franchise or anything, but why can't you just make a new IP? Why can't you just, why do you need the, the, the rights to do it? I guess they just want the cash from the resales or something. Getting them a bit of income or something like that. Maybe they really do care about that to fund their newer projects. I don't know, but it just seems crazy that this is all going on over star control. Yeah. They're apparently um, developers with a lot of experience in the in the industry because this game came out ages and ages ago. So you'd expect them to be of a more mature age. Well, yes. their behavior yes. does not imply that they are of a mature age at all. That being said, this is, uh, not a recent game that's been released. Like the control of the IP isn't that viable, I wouldn't say. The name isn't that familiar in the games industry. If it was a couple of years ago, you could see why uh, they'd want to try and retain control of the IP that everybody's familiar with. They will get a lot of sales from being associated with that IP. Star Control. I'd never heard of Star Control. Well, even if it's the original makers, you, you know, if you're a strategy fan or if you're a fan of the old Star Control games and you hear, oh, the, the makers of the old Star Control games are making the new game. That's enough, right? Surely that's, that's enough. All that aside, it's ridiculous that this is all taking place in public. Gauss I just want to check out. what Star Control is, because <laughs> I did have an Amiga. I did have an Amiga, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Star Control is that behemoth of an IP yeah. that I, I just underestimated. Let's have a look. Well, it sounds kind of like um, Space Total War. You've got this strategic layer, but then you go in and you have, you have battles. It, it, it probably it was probably really good at the time, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's not it's not something that's going to get you a lot of sales being associated with that name in this day and age. I don't see what the big fuss is about. Maybe it's like I said, it's a personal thing. Maybe it's a probably yeah. yeah, it's a personal thing that they just don't want to let go of that they don't, they feel like someone else isn't. Um, entitled to because legally they feel like it's theirs. I don't know, maybe it's more effort than it's worth. Maybe if they just tried hard enough, they could reach an agreement, right? Reach, right, get it? It would have worked if we just said Reach's name the whole time. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, it but we didn't know how to pronounce his name, so we just gave it a few <laughs> different goes. Take your pick. That's what that was about. There you go, it's a big, weird legal dispute over star control let us know what you think of this down in the comments remember to like the video if you enjoyed it please do subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this every day and you can check out that video right there right now if you want support us on patreon as well if you want to support the channel see you next time